Hey Lance Egan here with Fly Fish Food. I want to share with you one of my most productive streamers the last couple of years. I use this fly the most on a Euro setup, jigging a streamer, but it can also be very effective stripping streamers. This fly can be tied in lots of color combinations. We're going to show you my absolute favorite today. Uh, we call this fly the poacher. Let's get started tying. All right, let's get started. So I have a jig hook in the vise. This is a size 10. We tie this fly in 8, 10, and 12. You could, of course, adjust to your needs size-wise, uh, but those are the most common sizes. Uh, this is just a Umqua 400 jig hook. You could use any jig hook that you like. This is a bead that is a slotted tungsten in a 4.6 mil. Some of the companies make them in 4.5 instead of 4.6. That would also work. Or again, you can adjust the weight. If you'd like a lighter fly, you could use a smaller bead. If you wanted a heavier fly, you could use a 5.5 mil bead and so on. I like them usually pretty heavy, so I'm also going to add a little bit of lead wire. This is some 0 to 0. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that to the shank. Wrap it up to about the bead. Then I'm going to try and force it into the bead a little bit. We'll go that bead back and forth, get it to set in there, break off the back end. Then we're going to take some olive thread. This is Danville, but you could use any like 140 denier thread. UTC, you could use Semperfly, you could use all kinds of threads, just as long as it's strong enough to hand, hold up to a slightly larger streamer. So I started the thread, I started right behind the wire, kind of build up a little bit of a ramp and then wrapped over the wire to hold it in place. Next up, I'm gonna work the thread down towards the bend just a little bit and we're going to add the tail material. The tail for this is a squirrel's anchor strip. This particular color is Sculpin Olive. Once again, the colors on these are endless. This particular combination is my most productive, but you could tie them in light olive, in black, in tan, in uh, rust and purple and on and on. Uh, so I've got one of these little squirrel zonker strips here. I'm just going to cut it to length, about the length that I like. And I usually leave them probably a little bit longer than I think they should be because I can always trim them and make them shorter later. And then what I'm going to do is tie this in upside down. And I usually take the butt of this uh, the skin and push it right up against the skin from the squirrel strip and push it right up against the lead wire. That way we kind of continue to make a pretty level body. And I'm going to bind it in with a thread and I'm actually going to wrap it down the shank just a tiny bit, a little further than straight. This is the same trick we use on marabou streamers. If you tie it down that bend just a little bit, it tends to foul a lot less. So that's about where I want that. Next up, we're going to use just a permanent marker. Any marker would work. This is just a Sharpie. If you have a chart pack marker or a Prisma marker or anything like that, and I'm just going to add some bars to the underside of that little strip. That's optional, but just a little touch. We're going to basically try and imitate a Sculpin with this color, and Sculpins tend to be really modeled, so we're going to add a little bit of modeling there. So that's the end of our tail. Next up, we're going to add some flash. This is Ripple Ice Dub. This is different than regular Ice Dub. So Ripple Ice Dub has a little more texture to it. It's a little bit thicker, more coarse. This color is Mother of Pearl. And if you've looked at uh, Sculpins before, you'll note that they almost all have a little bit of a pearlescent belly. So I'm going to take just a pinch of this, not very much of it. And I'm just, I've got kind of half of it in my finger that's covered and half that's exposed. And I'm just going to capture it with the thread a couple of times and then fold it back and tie over it. That way it can't slide out and tie it right down on the belly here. If some of those are longer than others, that's perfect. It just kind of naturally tapers that way, adds just a little bit of flash. I don't want too much flash on this fly, just a hint of flash and a hint of that pearl underbelly. Okay, now that we have that, we're going to make the body. This is an easy streamer. I'm going to use the Stonfo Elite Roto Dubbing Tool. This is my favorite dubbing tool because it's got this little Y with these little hooks on it. So I can connect the hooks into my thread like so, and I'm going to make a dubbing loop. So we're going to make this loop. I'm going to tie it off, move it right back down to where the tail and the flash terminate, and then I'm going to move my thread up to the bead, throw in a half hitch, and use the rotary function. 
Next, we're gonna use some Arizona Semi Seal. This is Mega Semi Seal in the color Dirty Olive. Again, this is the color I like best, but there are a whole bunch of other olives. There's Canadian olive. There's a bunch of different colors you could use kind of to your heart's delight, whatever you deem uh, necessary to imitate the sculpins or whatever it is that the fish you're trying to catch are feeding on. But this Dirty Olive works really well. They only make this color in the Mega Semi Seal. They don't make it in the regular Semi Seal. And we don't really need the length of the Mega, I just happen to like this color. So if you had a color in standard semi-seal, that would work fine too. Now, I've got the dubbing loop tool here. I've got my loop that I can open up, and I'm just going to add some pinches of this dubbing in here. So I'm going to take a pinch of it at a time and slide it up in. The thing I really like about this tool is I can pull down on it to kind of hold materials in place like that. I can close the loop. And if I give it a little bit of slack, it will open up the loop. So I'm just going to keep adding dubbing to this, relatively sparse, but we're going to cover the body with it, so we need a fair bit of it. That ought to probably do. I'm going to slide some of those up. So it's looking something like that right now. You can't see very much of that in frame, I understand, but maybe you can see it a little better like this. So it's just loose, and now I'm going to use the tool and twist the dubbing up into kind of a rope so it looks a bit more like that now twisting quite aggressively then i'm going to grab this little stonfo dubbing brush and with the velcro side just kind of tease it out a bit so it's not too corded up then we're just going to wrap it around the shank and make a body so i want to cover the whole thing i had a couple of wraps of thread that didn't have dubbing so it took a couple extra wraps there if you want to stroke these fibers back, you can, but I'm going to really work this thing over with the Velcro in just a second here. So I'm going to wrap it all the way up to the bead. I'm going to pull over the top with the thread to tie off the dubbing loop, get rid of the excess thread here. I'm going to throw in a couple of more wraps just to hold tension. All right, next up, you can see that's kind of a rat's nest. So what we're going to do is take this same Velcro tool and just tease all that dubbing out. And what I'm going to do is kind of shape a body using this coarse semi-seal dubbing. So I'm pulling it all straight up. Sometimes I'll go across the back a little bit more too, tease it out. I really want to tease out that dubbing quite a bit. Then once you've got it kind of all combed one direction, I like to almost end up with it all pulled straight up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually trim it to shape. If you've ever looked at sculpins, you'll know that they have a much wider head, a fatter head than the rest of their body, so they taper quite aggressively. So I've got it pulled straight up right now, and what I'm going to do to make the head the widest part of the fly is I'm going to cut at an angle like this so that the, the head has the widest part of the dubbing and it gets much more narrow down towards the bottom of the fly. So it looks something like this. Okay, now you can kind of see that shape, but now I'm going to take this Stompho dubbing tool again and tease it back out to the sides. I'll turn the vise for you here in just a second so you can kind of see this profile. So now we've kind of made a, a wider profile on the fly. Of course, when we're stripping it, it's going to stroke back a little bit. It's not going to end up holding that shape completely, but it does still have the uh, silhouette of a larger head here and tapering thinner and thinner towards the tail. All right, the next step is to use some sort of olive soft hackle. Any sort of hen hackle will work or even a dyed olive partridge. Um, you could use olive, golden olive. There are lots of options. We're gonna put some options for you in the material list for this fly because there are many that you could use. Uh, it doesn't have to be a particular type of material. Just some sort of mottled or grizzly dyed olive or something like that. So I've trimmed the stem. I'm just gonna tie this in right behind the bead here. Capture it with a little bit of tension. Then we're just gonna take a couple of wraps. And I'm really not too worried about how this wraps as far as where, whether it's laying back or not because I'm gonna manipulate it quite a bit. So all the way around twice. Capture the tip of it. Then we're going to trim away the tip like so. I'm going to put some wraps in here to hold that. And then we're nearing the end here. I'm going to use just a little bit of that dubbing that I cut off a second ago just to clean up the head and force some of those fibers back. It won't take much of the dubbing. 
tiny bit of dubbing right here at the head, just wrapped over the top. And then we're gonna whip finish, and we're not quite done, but we're getting there. Whip finish, get rid of the thread. Now, one of the other features on a Sculpin is that it has really, really pronounced uh, pectoral fins. And although from the top, this may not look much like it, from the bottom, after I've kind of teased this out, I come in here now and find these fibers here on the bottom from that soft tackle, and I just trim them out. So the idea is that we end up with the soft tackle kind of looking more like pronounced uh, pectoral fins in addition to the dubbing shape of that fly. So we made a larger front, larger head on the fly, tapering to a much skinnier fly. Those will, of course, pulse and move as we're stripping it or as we're jigging it through the water column. That is the poacher. That's the olive version. Again, you can do it in all kinds of colors. I often fish it in black as well. Uh, we carry them in store and online in black and olive. So if you're not a tire and you just want a fresh streamer to throw at your fish, order them up. If you're a fly tire, then I highly suggest checking out the poacher.